We're on the third and final video for this uh, thing I've been doing with the Godzilla series, and we're on number 10. And for number 10, the 10th Godzilla movie that I love watching so much, you may have guessed it, Godzilla 2014. To me, definitely, to me, it definitely earned its place as one of the top 10 Godzilla movies. I watched this movie... I can honestly say maybe 30 times since it's come out, if not more. And that's because to me, despite its flaws, it's definitely not a perfect film, but what it gets right, it excels at very well. And that's setting up the atmosphere. Only the 98 film, which always ruined its atmosphere with a stupid joke or some kind of gag. <clears throat> this movie did it right. You know, it sets up the atmosphere very well. All the suspense scenes are set up. With the very ten, you feel the tension of if this could really happen, you know. <clears throat> it feels very realistic. And human characters to me are I loved all the human characters. I mean, sure, Aaron Taylor Johnson, as people will say, was a little dry, but I actually still liked his character Ford. It was a very subtle performance, but it was definitely there. You pretend it wasn't there, just sit there and say it was nothing. And the story was, uh, it was very nice. It was a simplistic story, but also it evoked a simple message, you know. The power of nature against man, which is a common theme in Godzilla. <clears throat> One that the 1998 film missed entirely with Godzilla, with, I mean, yeah, with their version of Godzilla being more just a random pest that it had to get rid of. But this film really brings it out. Both Godzilla and the Mutos looked phenomenal they just looked and sounded and behaved everything about them was just fantastic grade a material i have not one regret about how they looked or behaved in the film that's when this godzilla i love that they did their own thing with godzilla in this one he's he's just the humans are basically as many people said they're ants to him doesn't fucking matter what they do he's on his own mission and I, I love that about this man. He's not a hero. He's not a villain. He's literally just out to do one thing, and that's it. And humans are basically there just to get the hell out of the way. I love that basically the movie's about human. It's about nature. It's falling out of balance, and the humans fighting to do it their way, and nature doing it its own way. And the conflict that ensues is great to watch. Like I said, I love Kevin B, Brian Cranston, Elizabeth Olsen. All the performances were great, no matter how small or large they were in the film. It helped set up what needed to be done in 1998, but had failed to be done, and therefore bringing Rebirth to the franchise. And you just gotta love that new Godzilla roar. It's, it's great. The score also by Alexander Displa, I'm assuming you say it. It was a great score. Really, really great score. It had nice, touching, sad themes. Also, great battle themes. It was just all around good movie. Choreographed very well, very well lit, and like I said, very well staged in all of its action scenes. They don't just happen. <clears throat> There's lots of great build up, despite the cuts. I do hate some of the cuts they did, but in the end, it just doesn't stop me from enjoying the movie. Was, every time I view it, it gets better and better. So yeah, Godzilla 14 is definitely my number 10. This one never leaves the list at number 9, Destroy All Monsters. I love this movie. Like I said, it's it's this is one, to me this is my favorite one with aliens because it's the one where the aliens really do act the most logical for the most part. And there's a lot better design than I guess they would be later on when they became apes or cockroaches. Here are their worm thingamajigs. And the weakness actually makes sense as opposed to Invasion of Astral Monster, the way I actually enjoyed a lot. But in here, you know, it just it actually just makes a lot more sense. It's somewhat entertaining. The science fiction fights in this one are just great, you know, humans versus aliens. A lot of tension and it's really well done. I like I like the human characters a little dry a little bit, but uh, it doesn't distract like in Final Wars where there's too much emphasis on the humans which I like. You need a fight scene, have a little gun scene between humans and aliens, not all out war Dragon Ball Z kung fu shit. 
So I like it. I just loved it a lot what they did here. All the monsters, well, let's see. Godzilla looked great. Minya, fuck him. Kumanga, for what literally did was he looked great. Mothra. Mothra looked great. Lava form, nothing more. King Ghidorah was fantastic in it. Baragon, for what literally did, he looked great. Manda lost the distinctive horns from uh, Atragon, but looked pretty cool. I loved his city destruction scenes. Gorosaurus looked awesome. Angerus, it's updated from the 19, uh, 1955 film, and he looks freaking amazing. It looks much better, which is usually it's the other way around. Usually monsters look crappier as time goes on, but Angerus looked fantastic. And then other than that, Rodan. Rodan just kept looking worse after the 1956 film Rodan. But uh, what can I say? At least in this movie, they had dignity to do a lot of them as far away shots. They have a lot of close-ups. It's really a shame Rodan had to look so crappy in a lot of these movies. But uh, overall, all the monsters look really, really good in this one. And all the action scenes are really well done. I mean, I don't think... Any Godzilla movies ever beaten that final battle at Mount Fuji with all the monsters, which I wanted to see so badly in Final Wars, but was denied to me. Overall, this film was just one of the best to me. Like I said, the only problem I have was the dry human characters, but overall, this is really a memorable movie. It's it's one of the best Godzilla movies there is, most definitely. The Godzilla film holds a place in my heart at number eight. Gijo the Three-Headed Monster. I think known as the Great Monster Decisive Battle in Japan. I forget. Really long, convoluted title. But anyways, it tells a tale of Ghidorah's first time in a Godzilla franchise. The great little uh, meetup of Godzilla, Rodan, and Mothra. And I know it's lost some popularity, I, I guess, over the years. For introducing... Uh, some of the campier elements into the Godzilla franchise, which it definitely undoubtedly did. Along with also having a very, I'll say a story does not mesh with the monster action very well. I mean, we have Godzilla and friends doing one thing, and the humans doing another. Although, technically, they do kind of interlock, although very weakly, I will say that. With the whole Venusian and alien descendants, it's very complicated and you have to watch and pay attention you you'll get it and you'll say man that is strange and they have wrote something that's strange since unless you saw because it was hetera but in any case i actually like the story i mean i don't mind as much as the humans what they're doing doesn't really relate to the monsters all that much the point is they have something to do and it's interesting and i like that the human characters are very nice basic but nice as for the monster designs, Ghidorah looks fantastic. Mothra is just larva form, so you know what it is what it is. Looks nice and decent. Rodan. You know, I just cut Rodan and destroy all monsters. But this version of Rodan is actually nowhere near as bad as Invasion of Astral Monster or Destroy All Monsters. So for that, I can say it's 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 decent. It's yeah, that's that's a good word. Decent. Not terrible like the other ones. Decent. Godzilla looks, uh, you know, this conversion of Godzilla is actually not bad at all. The only problem I have with it is the fact that it's the same suit from Mothra vs. Godzilla, so I love the stature and look of it. I just hate how they destroyed the eyes and removed for more friendly eyes, I suppose. But all the same, though, Godzilla looks great. And like I said, King Ghidorah was fan freaking fantastic. King Ghidorah was godly looking. Music was awesome. Uh, I guess one of the only other complaints I would have, just some of the effects budget, but I guess it's, I understand because a lot of it probably did go to King Ghidorah the first time putting something like that on the screen in a Takatsu film like Godzilla. So Godzilla's breath had to suffer quite a bit for some of the special effects shots. Turning into a mist really sucks, but uh, Overall, because King Ghidorah, King Ghidorah has such a presence, I still like the movie a whole lot. And it still maintains a place in my heart as one of the very first ones, the very first one I ever saw. And one of the ones I treasure to this day. And it's also one of the few ones I can actually watch in both Japanese and English dub and still get a lot out of it and like it. 
And so overall, yeah, this is just one of my favorite ones. Definitely not to be missed. I was always holding very high regard. I'm glad they're remaking it, quote unquote, hopefully remaking it in 2018, which is still very far away. Fuck. Let's hope I make it. One of the best Millennium films and Godzilla films to date, in my opinion, would definitely be Godzilla Tokyo SOS. It's such a well put together movie, even though it's it's a little drier than something like GMK or Godzilla vs. Destroya later on. I mean, as far as uh, story and characters, but still, for what they did, it was very impressive. The scale of this one was just epic. I only my only crawl this one, I wish it had been a longer movie. That's the only thing I wish about it. But other than that, I have like no complaints about Godzilla Tokyo SOS. All the monsters look fantastic. This is one of the best versions of Mothra ever presented in both larva and adult forms. Just look great. Godzilla looks fantastic. Love the new chest guard. Kiru, slightly redesigned from the Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla, looks freaking great. I just love all the monster designs in here. The action was top notch. Some of the best action you'll see in a Godzilla movie. It really is just well done. The human genre, the human drama, I mean human genre, human drama you see in the film. They're not super well developed characters. But for what we get, it's very well done. Prime Minister is back. Akane takes a very minor role as opposed to what she did in terror i mean not uh, terror godzilla against mega godzilla which is odd just to be replaced by another female pilot character but i suppose why not didn't bother me too much and then we have a new guy who is basically supposed to repair mega godzilla and he has a fascination with him which is understandable so overall with great human characters and a great storyline to go with it and some epic scaled action and not to mention, I almost forgot, a very, very enchanting, great score. I like it a whole lot more than the Godzilla against Mechagodzilla score because it takes leaps and bounds to do a whole lot more with the music. And I guess it's because Mothra's in it. Mothra always adds a mystical fantasy element to these movies, which here just mixed really well. I just love this. I just, it's one of those Godzilla movies that I just have almost nothing to complain about. If I had one minor complaint, it just I wish during a drill scene, Godzilla had been bleeding a whole lot more, which I don't think he did at all in the movie. No, he didn't. So he couldn't really believe the severity of the wound, but when a guy's getting drilled in the stomach, I guess it does really hurt. <laughs> so I, you know, I, I believe that he was down to the count and actually beat him for once. I just wish they had the ball to show the blood, which the Heisei movies and GMK had no problem doing. That's not the problem I had. Millennium Fears as a whole. On a side note, Millennium Fears as a whole needed to show more blood during the Godzilla fights. On a side note. In any case, Godzilla, Tokyo SOS, or in Japan, Godzilla X Mothra, X Mecha Godzilla, Tokyo SOS. Really good movie. Love it. One of the best. Godzilla vs. Bialante. This one I only saw it. Only a few years ago, it was the last Heisei movie I saw. I mean, it was the last of them for me to see. And when I finally saw it, it just blew me the hell away. I loved how involved the human characters were. I love how Godzilla and all Bialante's forms looked. And the music, about 90% of the time, fit very well. Actually, you know what? I'll go ahead and say 100. I even like the little rock theme they did because they added the Godzilla's theme to it. So even though it was kind of odd for it to be there, I actually still ended up enjoying it. Like I said, this is one of the few non iffy copy scores that fits really well to the movie. It's sad. It brings, you know, brings up the battles and makes them feel just intense. And it also has a sense of wonder to it. It's a really great score. And great special effects, really great practical effects. Bialante looks menacing and just terrifying. And Godzilla looks and sounds great in this one. And like I said, the story is just great. Dark, little tidbits of humor, and a whole lot of uh, things to think about when the movie's over. 
about you know the ideas of people messing with DNA and the the power behind genetics and just you know the good old thing what man should not do in place of what they've done it's just an interesting story it really is it's one of the best <clears throat> Godzilla movies out there definitely one of the best of the Heisei movies for me definitely towering over even Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah for me it just it just did a lot with what it had and just makes us makes it so impressive <clears throat> yeah, definitely check out Godzilla's Bialante if you haven't seen it yet it's one of the best Godzilla movies great movie overall I really want to see Bialante come back in the movie Gareth Edwards hope you're listening bring back Bialante god damn it Coming in at number 5, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, the 1993 film known in America to you people as Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2. And that's not like a prick, I'm also American. Obviously, I just hate the title Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2. It's distracting. But in any case, this one is one of my all-time favorites to this day. <clears throat> and if I recall right, I'm pretty sure I'm right. This one really does have the most Godzilla in it, I think. Godzilla does so much in this one. But that's the reason I like it. I mean, I like it like because the story is so well done in this one. The human characters are written in very well. I think this is, yeah, this was the first one that had Mickey Sagusa had some conflict with her, uh, between her duties to protect Japan and to, and to take down and control Godzilla. So you see a bit of that here, and it's just... It's really well done. I love that. This where Mickey's characters are really coming out as the centerfold of the Heisei era and not just some side character. But we also have great uh, comedic efforts from, uh, I think, was it Kazuma? No, no, Aoki. Aoki. He was a really great character. I love the little scientist they had. And the conflict here was just great. All the monsters in this one, which... Godzilla movie, I won't say rarely does, but I'm saying to have this many monsters in one movie, Baby Godzilla, Godzilla, Rodan, Fire Rodan, Mecha Godzilla, to have that many monsters, all of them look just epic and great. It's 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 a well done, it's just well done, a feat, well deserved, and long awaited. Every monster looks great, color scheme is good, roar is good. There's no freaking complaints there. The score was fantastic, a lot of variation in between the themes to keep things exciting. And I just love the way the fights are set up in a lot of these movies. A lot of them, I guess because it's Rodan, maybe, is a lot of quick cuts, makes for some interesting fights. I, to this day, one of my favorite Heisei fights has to be the one between Godzilla and Rodan on the island. It's a really well done fight, very brutal and very entertaining, and like all good, all the really good Godzilla movies, it has a nice emotional center to it that keeps you invested and just makes it a very interesting movie and just a great science fiction film. Definitely hope this gets some kind of life in the future. Hopefully, Gareth Edwards, I'm looking at you. Bring back Mechagodzilla in a really good way, like we saw here. Really good story. One of the few where we feel like Godzilla is actually in danger. Might I add to that? Yeah, I love this one. It has touches the show era to it as well, while also staying true to the Heisei era and making it a very nice modern 90s film. But also the touch of you know the Rodan Godzilla relationship at the very end. It's it just a beautiful touch to the movie. So great visuals, great music, great characters, intricate story. Although I will never understand the the plant music. I, I just, every time you try to think about it, it gives you a headache. I'm like, just go with it. Fuck it. Nice. It was beautiful music, anyways. But like I said, Godzilla vs. Godzilla, great freaking Godzilla movie. Okay, the last one for the big three, uh, freaking GMK, Godzilla, Mothra, King Ghidorah, and fucking Baryon, Giant Monsters All Out Attack, no, Baryon, it's not really in the title, Whew, need to breathe, the best, the best of the Millennium Series, that I thought line will never change for me, I mean, GMK is just up there with the top five, where 
Doesn't matter what kind of movie I see until I see one that really blows me the hell away. GMK is one I'll always be up there because it did so many things right with the other franchise that the Millennium Fuse was getting wrong and got wrong after and before GMK arrived on the scene. You know, they got the whole human scale with Godzilla thing. As you see Godzilla next to humans, something that SOS and I believe against Mechagodzilla didn't really do all that often. Final Wars made it once or twice. But here you see it quite a bit. Humans next to Godzilla, you feel the terror of what it feels like to be in the presence of something that powerful and that big. And it's just... See, I, I went on that, went on for that long just about Godzilla's appearance alone in the movie. Godzilla looks great, he has presence, and he has a purpose. I just love everything about it. The monsters, I know they were kind of weakened a bit for the sake of the tone of the film, but for that... For the sake of the artistic rendition of what, what they wanted here, Godzilla being this overpowering badass, I can take Ghidorah being a good guy and being a little weaker, and I can take Mothra being weak, because Mothra's always been weak, now she's just smaller to boot, so, <laughs> hey. Every monster looked great, though, jokes aside, Mothra, King Ghidorah looked great, Paragon looked fantastic, and brung life to a character who had been shown pretty much no love ever since the show era, so that was great also. Also, one time, Godzilla composer Koatoni did a fantastic score. It was very different for the Godzilla series. Electronic, but also had that good old orchestra feel to it. Powerful, dark, very moody, and just a great score overall. You definitely feel the gamma, 90s gamma in it, but it's still its own thing. I like that. Also, the human characters, probably the best of the whole Millennium series, undoubtedly. Every story was moving, you you actually believed the characters, and you actually felt you were like right there with them in the whole thing. That's probably the best part about the movie. You don't feel like you're watching something that's just like, huh, oh, this is a fun little entertaining science fiction. You actually feel like you're there in the middle of the battle, and it just makes for a great freaking movie along the way because of that. And, best of all, I just love that ending. This movie just comes together, has a perfect atmosphere, perfect build-up, great monster designs, freaking epic, disaster-packed action. Love it. It was intense. It's one of the best, most intense GMK words can describe. I always get so muddled and lost when I'm describing this movie, but it's, it's one of those ones that you want to impress someone who's not into Godzilla. You want to show them because the movie that really stands out, you show them GMK. And that's how I feel about that. The big three, so I'm also starting things off right with Gojira 1954. Yes, I still love popping this baby in every once in a while. And it's still, every time, it's a great movie. And every time it makes you think. I was trying to argue myself, what's the best aspect of this movie? And for me, I think... I'm still lost between the visuals or the allegory behind them. The horror of what it all means. And the greatest thing about this movie, every time you watch it, you notice something little, like in the dialogue or in the destruction scenes, you notice something little that speaks volumes. I think one of the favorite things I noticed so far, pre watching and rewatching it, is Dr. Sarazano's speech near the end, right before he's convinced by Tira Takarada to uh, use his weapon against Godzilla. And he says the whole thing about man being weak. And you know, he brings up missiles versus missiles and all that stuff. But I just love that line. Man is a weak animal. And it makes you think that, you know, it speaks truth to the course of mankind's history in this world. And what becomes of every invention of death. Eventually it is abused. And that's what happens. We turn down this dark path every time. It's unavoidable. The movie speaks about a number of messages, you know, restraint, the power of nuclear horror, and what it does, and what it takes to stop all these things. It's just coming together. <clears throat> this, this is a Godzilla movie that definitely will remain one of the best, uh, as far as being a great director, this is was Honda's highlight. It's just one of the best films he ever made, most definitely. One of the best ones ever made as far as I'm concerned.
let alone Godzilla films, some of my top 10 lists as far as movies go. And overall, it is definitely, is, it's the king of the Godzilla, of all the 30 films, it's definitely the king still, undoubtedly as far as quality, production, and what it means, and fleshed out characters. And the other two that come after this one that I rated higher, you know, it's solely out of just, you know, one things that I watch all the time. As far as I'd say, honestly speaking, what movies I like to watch more. Gojira is a good, powerful film, but it's not something you watch all the time. Not only because you soil it for yourself, but also because, you know, it's a very dark and depressing movie. And it, you know, it watches like that all the time can get you in a certain mood. But uh, yeah, this movie is it's definitely one of the best there is. I can't stop gushing about this one. This some every scene you, every scene in this one is very important to the plot. That's all I can say. It's also one of the best well acted Godzilla movies you'll ever see. Doctor Yamane, uh, Emiko Kochi, <clears throat> Akira Takarada, Doctor Sarazawa, all these characters. Even the King of the Monsters U.S. cut still retains a lot of the power of this one, although not to the same extent as the Japanese version. That's how good it is. Even the U.S. version, US version isn't that bad. It's just not as strong. But you want a hard-hitting film, you watch the Japanese uncut version. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then moving on to the final two. Coming in at second place, Mothra vs. Godzilla 1964. Ever since I saw this one as a kid and then rebought on DVD, I've loved this movie. There's so much so much going on in this one, I love it. First of all, the human characters are very engaging. They feel very realistic. They're funny. They have something to do. They're involved with the plot. Up until the last like 20 minutes, but even so, that small fault, I still love the characters in this one. I love the message in this one, Brotherhood of Mankind, basically. And, of course, the price of greed. The villains in this one were great. I loved it. First time, one of the very few times we've had really, really menacing and, and realistic, realistic, note realistic villains in a Godzilla movie. Something you won't see... Too often later on, because, you know, goddamn aliens, cockroaches, and simian beings from a third planet, from the black hole, no less. But in any case, this one was just really great. It had a really well-grounded story. Godzilla, it's my favorite designs ever. He looks fantastic. He looks gorgeous in this movie. The glare, it says it all. The spikes in the back of his head. I just love this Godzilla suit. It's one of my favorite ones ever. Just watching it on screen. It's one of the few Godzilla suits, as I said, every Godzilla suit has a bad angle. This is one of the few that didn't. 1964 Godzilla from Mothra Godzilla, to me, had no bad angles. It was just a perfect suit. I love the way it moved. For the 60s, it was just really well done. And Mothra, Mothra looked great in this one. Mothra was also very realistic in this one. And it was just, it was a great fight. One of my favorite fights in the Showa era, most definitely. Now, I think a lot of complaints in this one always come to me, at least in the modern day. A lot of the younger fans really hate the final fight because they're losing to the two caterpillars. But to me, I loved it. And to me, it was also realistic because it was just, you know, simple animal nature. Godzilla can't reach all the corners. These little monsters, they can hide, take advantage of being smaller. And I guess that was the ultimate understanding of the story. Coming together, two smaller forces stopped a bigger one. <clears throat> and that was basically the whole nature of the movie, basically. Coming together. So I respect the ending fight very much, and I enjoy it very well. The pounding of Ifukube's great score combined with the action made for just a really well-done climax and well-done film overall. Like I said, every scene to me was just gorgeous. I loved it. The only scene I could do without, and it's only an American cut, thank God, is the little frontier missile thing. Pointless scene. Where they try and shoot little specialized missiles like Godzilla that don't do much. But knock him into a hole, which he climbs right back out of. 
fantastic frontier missiles thanks america but in any case mother vs godzilla to me is my favorite i love it just the look on godzilla's face music the characters it's already well put together for this one love it and number one finally finishing off my godzilla reviews from worst to best my most watched godzilla movie my all-time favorite to watch over and over again godzilla versus destroyer this is one of the ones i saw as a kid made me cry even to this day makes my heart cringe watching it it's one of the godzilla films i find pretty much nothing wrong with it when i watch it i mean here's little little things you can nitpick but uh overall it's one of the most pleasing godzilla films there is to date the action was epic i loved every fight scene it was just great a material the human characters were very well involved and this is one of the very few that once again dares to be like the 1954 original and big questions of if we should do these things and if we shouldn't and the consequences of that when we do you know the sins of the past come back to torture the future and at least a very interesting climax and some very interesting characters it's one of the few that you actually remember the characters names because it's so intertwined with not only just original but it builds an identity for new characters like the new scientist who i guess is supposed to be like the new dr serizal he you know he has the same choice to do that and of course i love how it relates to the very original with having these characters who were they were not his direct descendants of dr yamane but they knew his work and what it meant to him and i love that and of course mickey Segusa's character well, i should say Megumi Odaka's character, Mickey Sagusa was the name of the character, but in any case, she was just, she was brilliant in this movie, I really felt for her, I really believed her pain, I really believed she cared about Godzilla in this one, and, like I said, the monsters, Godzilla Jr., this is the best Godzilla infant design ever, Godzilla Jr. looked menacing, and he still looked like an infant Godzilla, I don't know why it was so hard in Godzilla Final Wars. I can't fucking figure it out. Because Godzilla Jr. looked, sounded great, acted great. He had some great fights. Some of you hear that in Godzilla movie. The baby Godzilla had some great fights. Baby Godzilla was great in Godzilla vs. Godzilla 2. But he didn't fight because he was too little. Little Godzilla was a little piece of shit in Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla. Mini, I fucking hate him. But here Godzilla Jr. is just a badass. Burning Godzilla, or just Godzilla 1995, but Burning Godzilla, I like to call him, looked freaking, oh my god. I still love seeing it every time I watch the movie. I have never seen anything like it since, and I hope one day they do replicate it, but uh, as for now, it just looks so freaking amazing. What Kochi Kawakita did, rest in peace, what he did to make this, this on the verge of death, look for Godzilla was just incredible I loved it the steam the glowing red eyes the burning apart body fantastic and destroyer one of my favorite monsters to date just the transformations the one of the best destroy uh, best Godzilla villains because he has the most personality I know some people say it's debatable whether he was the most uh, uh, hardest opponent for Godzilla Due to just outright uh, combat and physical strength and uh, techniques and whatnot, but to me, not only was formidable in that aspect, but it also he was just an emotional battle for Godzilla, and that was made him a really great villain. I haven't seen a villain that great since for Godzilla, honestly. He's either been overpowered or his opponents. Yeah, well, that's pretty much what you've seen ever since Godzilla vs. Destroyer. Every opponent has been pretty much very weak. Mickey Garris one shot killed him. GMK don't even get started. Everyone got killed off pretty easily. Overall, if Godzilla Final Wars, every opponent was a joke. Hero one shot to the face. Damn near killed him. And the Mudos, those guys, overall, were technically weak compared to Godzilla one on one. But here you have an opponent who really stood his ground and just really banged Godzilla up. It made for a goddamn good fight 
And this is when a few record that did not make the Japanese military look like a bunch of bitches. So with that said, it all comes together to make a very well-rounded Godzilla movie and one of Ifukube's best scores. I think ending track theme Requiem. It's I listened to it hundreds of thousands of times and it's it never loses its power. It's just a great freaking movie. I love it. And uh, before I go on and on, I guess this will conclude my from worst to best Godzilla movies, celebrating all 30 of them in their bad and uh, just greatness. So Godzilla Story is my top pick for most rewatchable and what I enjoy the most. Kudos to the Godzilla community for growing, and I'm glad we're seeing more Godzilla films, and Josh signing off.